All right, now it's time for the most fun and most nerve-wracking part of the build. We're going to turn it on for the first time. So I've got the completed unit here, top still off in case I need to adjust anything. I do have a dummy load connected just in case. And I have, while this is not strictly necessary, it is a very good idea. This is an adjustable DC power supply. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but this just has alligator leads, alligator clips, excuse me. So I'm just going to clip these to a power pole adapter that I have in the back. So I'm going to power this on. And this particular unit uh, has a, a switchable power output. So right now the output is not on yet. I have wound this for nine volts. So the first thing we need to do is get this guy down to nine volts. And so the way these work is you set a voltage and a current. And so it will output this voltage. And if this current limit is exceeded, it will reduce the voltage until you know to attempt to uh, hold the current at this level. So we definitely don't want two amps. What I'm going to do is probably maybe 100 to 150. So we've got 9 volts, 150 milliamps. So when I power this on, it's going to provide 9 volts to the QMX. And if it starts to draw more than 150 milliamps, the voltage will drop to keep that current down. And so what that does is if there's a short or some other problem in this board and it tries to draw too much current, it will shut it off real quick. So the instructions say this should have exactly zero current draw when you first power it up. However, I've heard that the new ones actually have firmware installed. So it is possible, I think, for this maybe to have a little bit of current draw, but we'll, we'll just see. So I'm going to hold my breath and hit this button. Okay, so we've got 9 volts, and you see the CV is lit. So what that means is it's in constant voltage mode. So that means that there's no current limiting going on. Should the current limit be uh, enacted, then it'll go to constant. You'll see CC here, constant current mode. So I'm going to push the button see if it turns on it does and I don't think 150 milliamps is enough so I'm going to give him a little more let's try like 250 there we go and we're going to set our band version to 160 to 6 and the contrast actually looks pretty good but that's the first adjustment I'm going to make Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's a little bit high, maybe. Oops, sorry about that. So you can see with this power supply, we can see we're providing 9 volts, and it's drawing 134 milliamps. Which is nice, too. It's actually, I've used that to measure the current consumption of some of my other rigs. So since this is metal, I'm going to be very careful here. And I'm going to grab my little contrast adjustment here. I'm going to turn it down. Okay, it's going away. And I like to turn up just until you start to see the blocks for the characters and turn it back down. So I think that's pretty good right about there. All right. So there we go. We powered up and no smoke and we're drawing about the right amount of current so let's see um, actually I may uh, I don't think I'm gonna put the top on just yet that off. I'm going to set the current maybe a little higher. Alright, so the 
battery voltage is showing low. Oh, because it thinks, probably thinks this is a 12 volt unit. Um, oh, hold the menu down. I've got to remember how to use this thing. Go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Just sort of have the internal. Press clock. Press plus. Alright, right, so let's look at uh, display, battery display, enable, battery full, say, uh, 10 volts. Alright, so I actually don't know how much current this should be drawing, but everything seems to be working there. I don't see any smoke or anything bad. So, although it has reduced, yes, yeah, so, so you can see here on line meter, so we're at 350, the voltage is 5.5, and, and we're in constant current mode. So I'm going to do something bad here. Increase that. All right, so we're at 400 milliamps. And that's still not good. What is happening here? Very strange. All right, I'm going to turn that off for a second. I won't remember any of my settings, I don't think. All right, so I took it out of the case because um, I've seen some weird voltage issues. I don't know if this uh, power connector was not making good contact or if there's something shorted. But I'm going to just see if it'll receive. So I just turned it on here. I'm here in FT8. Let's go down to CW. Oh, well, there's somebody. Cool. So it does actually receive. My, my uh, if you notice my current's looking a lot better too oh <laughs> I was like why well, won't it let me turn it's actually kind of cool and it protects you from going outside the band is that what it's doing so if I can go above 168 here. No, oh, that's pretty awesome, actually. I just saw that Forrest was spotted. Let's see if he's out there. 18087. <laughs> That's kind of a one problem Oops. with this uh, radio. So many bands, the way to get through them is by double clicking, which is kind of a pain. Let's see if we hear Forrest here.
think I do hear it a little bit in there. station here. Let's see how many people are on CW. Not a lot right now. I can't remember. I think she remember there was a uh, CME or something today. Let's uh, go for broke and see if we can transmit. Oh, I need to bump this up to, uh, I think you said 1.5 amps on transmit. Yep. Oops, no keyer. Turn the keyer on here. Here, here mode, Ambex B. can get spotted here probably not on 15 Oops. let's go down to Ooh, it might be interesting to see if there's anything on 10 let's go down to 40 70 30 somewhere in this range have my power oh that's right I turned this off after I turned on all the display stuff battery power SWR display I want that on S meter I want that on AGC on transmitting there Drawing current. 